So Sony announced a bunch of new gaming peripherals, specifically three headsets and two monitors. I reviewed the most expensive headset, the H9s. So if you're interested in checking out that video, there'll be a link in the description, but I do have the M9 here. This is the more expensive monitor. It's 899, it's 4K, 144 Hertz, and it's 27 inches. The beauty about this guy is that it will match your PlayStation perfectly. The design just screams PlayStation. You have this curved white back, it is made out of plastic, but the front of the monitor is flat. The back has this angled base, the middle part is plastic, and then the back part is a piece of metal. It's very easy to set up. There's only two screws in the box, which attaches the plastic portion to the metal part, and then you just take the monitor and you slip it on the visa mount. The only issue I had was that the visa mount kind of sticks out a bit, and it doesn't look connected. Uh, hopefully it's just my version and others are fine, but I do want to point it out. You can't rotate the monitor in portrait mode. It's stuck in landscape the entire time. So if you buy two of these and you want one in portrait, you can't do it unless you mount it on a monitor arm. You can move the monitor up and down. It has a pretty good amount of height, but I still personally use a monitor stand to get it exactly at eye level. Tons of ports. Tons, two HDMI ports. They're obviously 2.1, so they support up to 120 Hertz, variable refresh rate, so it will work perfectly with a PlayStation or Xbox. But you also have a full-size display port. You have a Type-C port, which can also be used as a display port. You have three USB ports, and of course you have a USB port that allows you to connect to a PC. Built inside of this thing is a KVM switch. So if you use the two USB ports, the Type-C and the regular one that goes to a PC or a computer, you can switch back and forth with the same sort of accessories. The only thing I don't like about this design is that it's a bit wobbly. It's not gonna fall over anything, but it doesn't feel super secure. And the placement for your cables to be routed is very small. I could only fit about three cables through here and then it got jammed. So if you wanna have more than, let's say, three cables going into the back of your monitor and you want them to go through this thing, you really can't do it, which means you might have a bit of messy cable management from the cables going on the side. The power brick is 160 watts. It's quite chunky for a 160 watt power brick, but you do have controls on the back of the monitor. One is your power button, and of course you have your nub that controls all the OSD settings on the monitor itself. It works like any other monitor. You tap the little nub, you can go into the menus, change things like the brightness and the contrast and all that kind of stuff. But the beauty about it is that it comes with software. You download the InZone software and you can do everything directly from Windows. Contrast, picture settings, you name it. This makes it so much easier than manually going into the controls, swiping back and forth to find the perfect picture setting for whatever you wanna do. Everything can be done in the software. There's also a auto profile picture mode, which basically goes back and forth depending on what you're doing. So let's say if you're gaming, it will switch to the gaming profile and give you the lowest response time, which is one millisecond by the way, or if you're jumping into a movie, it will automatically switch the profile to cinema mode. You can disable this if you don't like it. Of course, you can create your custom profiles using let's say a, a monitor reader to color calibrate it, but it's there if you prefer that. Now there's two two watt speakers built into this monitor. They don't sound good. I do not wish the sound quality on my worst enemy, but they're there in case you need to test something. I'd rather have them than not have them, but don't expect good sound quality out of this. But the colors on this guy just pop, at least compared to my Gigabyte MU32 4K 144 Hertz gaming display. They just look a lot more vibrant. The brightness goes up to 420 nits with a peak brightness of 600. The color gamut is expansive and the Delta average is below one. I'd feel totally comfortable doing design work on this because you have the best of both worlds. Now this is HDR 600 certified and I did compare it to an HDR 400 monitor. Obviously HDR looks better on this. You can see the colors pop more, it light up a bit better, but personally, and this is very subjective, I don't think true HDR kicks in until you get to about a thousand nits of peak brightness. Now this is a full air rate local dimming display with 96 zones. So when you're looking at the blacks and there's brighter lights that are closer to it, it does a better job of keeping those blacks blacker compared to your standard 4K gaming display. It's not perfect, it's not mini LED or OLED, so you're never gonna get 100% deep dark blacks, but it's really good for an IPS panel. 
Now I did do a lot of gaming with this monitor. That's the best part of testing. I played Apex Legends, Warzone, Fortnite, you name it. And I did like the way things looked. It was a lot more vibrant. The blacks looked a bit darker. There was better separation and the panel could get brighter. It just felt more, I don't know, immersive than the typical Gigabyte MU32 that I have here at the studio and the HP Omen 27i that I personally use at home. But I do wish they didn't make a 4K version of this. 4K is cool, but on a 27 inch monitor, I kind of wish they went with QHD, you know? Because if they went with QHD, they can bump up the refresh rate even more. And then if you're using this with your PC and you have a powerful card to go with it, you can really take advantage of those higher refresh rates but I kind of get why they went with 4K. They wanted this to work with the PlayStation since PlayStation supports 4K. But once you start like putting settings on QHD in a more demanding game, it doesn't look as sharp because you're using a 4K panel. I should also mention it supports G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync and will automatically detect based on the GPU that's in the computer. But look, at the end of the day, this is a good 4K monitor. And if you have an Xbox or a PlayStation and you want a monitor to go with it, this is a great option. I think Sony does also have to improve the build quality a little bit. It's a little bit too loose and it feels a bit too cheap on some portions, but overall it's a fantastic first attempt. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you wanna check it out, there'll be a link as well. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.